for exaggerated box jump shots, we're working on finding a lift point in an actual jump shot. So right now I'm standing on a six inch box. That's just giving me six inches of exaggerated hang time for me to find a more comfortable lift point. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force myself to jump off the box and find my lift point while I'm in the air. Really find and embrace that lift point, be in the air, and then release it. Now obviously I don't wanna release the ball as I'm coming down, and that's why I'm giving myself six inches of extra hang time so I can find that and then find that comfortable release out of that actual jump shot. What I don't want you to do is just make yourself six inches taller. If all I did was stay on the box, bring it to my spot and shoot it, that's just making myself six inches taller instead of finding an actual jump shot. So what I want you to focus on when you jump off the box is finding that spot while you're in the air, not finding that spot while you're still on the box. And so I want you to jump and rip the ball up as you're jumping. So when we pause that moment in time, we have a real jump shot on our hands. Now high lift points are probably one of my favorite lift points to talk about strictly because one, it gets way overused because I, as shooting coaches and, and coaches talk about a lot of times, that was typically their era, that mid-range type shot, getting the ball really high before you shoot it because they were always talking about shooting over people. Now there's two issues that I like to talk about with this. Is one, not everybody's body is physically capable of shooting from a high lift point. And it could be a couple reasons. It could be an age factor, or it could be a physical strength factor. It's very hard to get into that high lift point if my body isn't physically ready for it. The second issue with it is, even if I were to shoot out of a high lift point and I shoot over somebody and I miss, typically what is a coach gonna say? They're gonna say, hey, stop taking contested shots. That's why sometimes it can get so confusing to actually get to a high lift point is because they want you to be able to shoot over people. But if you miss a shot shooting over somebody, you get yelled at anyways. But what you have to know with a high lift point is how necessary it is to have one. Now, a high lift point is strictly when I start to lift the ball through my lift path, wherever that might be, let's just go center of the body. And that high lift point is typically anywhere from my hairline and slightly above, not quite getting to a high extended lift point, which would be much higher. Now, what happens here is when I get to this high lift point, there's a little bit of lack of arm strength in this because my elbow is almost already extended, so there's very little elbow left to extend through so what happens is I lack some strength from the upper body on that shot. Now what that means is I need to get strength from my lower body. Now that's not just me bending down into my legs more, that's me actually physically jumping or elevating to get into that shot. That's why typically when you see somebody in a high lift point, you're gonna see a little bit more elevation. Now this is where sometimes shooting can get a little bit confusing. Typically a taller, bigger, stronger player can access higher lift points just due to their physicality. Now before we get too far into high lift points, we need to first understand that shooting cannot be the exact same from every spot on the floor. And so if you're the type of person who teaches that every shot is the same and you're teaching a high lift point, you're potentially gonna cause a lot of problems for a player because players don't typically have the strength to shoot from range deeper than the three point line, for instance, at the higher lift point. So what that causes is players having that prototypical two motion type shot from deep because they're taught they're always supposed to shoot the ball the exact same way. And so yes, we want you to develop a high lift point, but we want you to understand the purpose behind a high lift point and not get in your head that you have to shoot that high lift point from deep. And so a lot of times when we look at actual great three point shooters, we're seeing low lift points in their shot. That's because you actually have more range and more power from low lift points. You don't typically shoot those over people in the same way. So you don't have to have a high lift point in those types of shots. And so players will shoot from lower lift points from deep. And that's especially gonna be important as you back up more and more and more. Try shooting a half court shot, for instance, at a high lift point, you can barely get the ball to the basket. And so you have to, as a player, be able to shoot the ball from a low lift point as you get further back, but then understand the power of shooting from a higher lift point as you get closer to the basket because you don't need the power. And now you're getting closer to defenders and you're having to actually create space in the air. A lot of times you'll see a lot of players like a LeBron James or a Paul George who typically, or a Kawhi Leonard, who typically shoot from much higher lift points just due to they're physically able to. They'll shoot pretty much everywhere on the floor from a higher lift point just because their physical body, their, their specimen-like quality allows them to do that stuff. So what a high lift point is gonna allow me to do as a player is not only have the ability to create a little separation by lifting to a higher trajectory, what it's also gonna allow me to do is access a couple different shots. 
Now, a lot of times people are making statements such as the mid range is a lost art. And I want to dive into that topic and really understand why that is, if there's any truth to it, but also just simply help players understand why a high lift point is going to be so important to their mid range game to begin with. Now, if we're discussing a mid range, what I want you to think of is a one dribble or a two dribble pull up where a player is getting a little bit closer to the basket around 15 feet and now they have to elevate for a shot. In those types of instances, players will have to actually allow themselves to gain separation in the air. See, if I was shooting a lower lift point shot and I already have space in front of me, I don't have to elevate over anybody. I can simply go to a lower lift point and release. But if I have to actually gain separation in the air, that means that someone is in my space. And in those instances, I'm gonna have to allow the ball to get to a higher lift point, get myself to actually create separation in the air, get over the defender, and then actually release the ball for the shot. Now that is why a high lift point is gonna be so important so a player can actually have that option in the game. If you never work on a higher lift point, obviously you're not gonna be able to take those types of shots very well when players are actually in your space. And so now you're a one dimensional player, you can only shoot when no one's in front of you. And so the most important aspect of developing a high lift point is for a player to actually have a mid-range weapon when needed. Now, no matter what you believe in terms of a mid-range game is important in today's basketball or not, in order to have one, you have to have a higher lift point when you need that extra space and you need that extra separation. Typically, if you see somebody with a high lift point, they'll be a little bit better in the mid-range. And a lot of that reason why is because when it comes down to trajectory at the mid-range, if I'm in a higher lift point, I don't have to shoot with as much arc. If I'm in the mid-range and I'm shooting from a low lift point, now I actually have to, do shoot, have to shoot the ball up to get it to then go into the basket. So with a high lift point, it's gonna really open up certain parts of my game that I might not be good at right now because all I do is shoot from lower points. So what I like to do when we're talking about developing high lift points is actually develop the form that is gonna be required in order to have a higher lift point and thus have a better mid-range game. And this is when I like to actually exaggerate things because what happens to a lot of players is they're only taught to shoot one way. A very common myth in the game of basketball is that you need to be able to shoot the basketball the same way from everywhere on the floor. And so if you always taught a player how to shoot from a lower lift point, for instance, because that's where they're going to get the best range, now they're not necessarily tapping into higher lift points. And what that causes is a lack of feel for higher lift points. So you can tell a player to do this all day long, but then when they actually shoot, they don't actually get there and they can shoot from a lower lift point and think that they're actually shooting from a higher lift point. And so we need to be able to teach players how to feel what a higher lift point is, and we need to separate that from a lower lift point feel. That's why I often call compare and contrast training. You understand your space, you're driving through, come up, find your lift point, find a shot. All right? So if you can grab, find, shoot. That's what I'm looking for right now. These are exaggerations. For some reason, a lot of times players are afraid to exaggerate. I'm gonna skip, power stop, get to my spot, find that lift point, get the shot, right? So can you feel like you're in the game? Now, if we pause that moment in time, once it hits my hands, this is the part we're focusing on, did it look real? The reason typically is, is because you've, give, you've been given a bad message on habit development, all right? And so what I wanna remind you guys of is experimentation with your technique when it comes to shooting is not going to hurt you at all. And the reason why I can guarantee that is because we're only doing this in a moment. How our habits develop over a ton of time. So the gift of training is that from a trainer perspective, I cannot screw you up in one day. I can also not build you up in one day, right? That's our gift because that means we can make mistakes, we can be experimental, we can find, see where our comfort is, and then we can start to choose how we're gonna rep something else. And so to help a player actually tap into a higher lift point, I want them to, I wanna force them into those high lift point positions where they actually can feel what that position feels like. And so that's where we can exaggerate things. We can have players jump higher than they normally would jump catch a ball in the air, not because it's game-like, but because we want them to actually force the ball into that higher lift point, force them to be in the air longer than they usually would be, and then shoot out of that position. Now, even if it's not a complete game situation in that way, by exaggerating that onto them, a player is now gonna start feeling the difference between a higher lift point 
in a lower lift point. We can do the same type of thing if I have a player jump and grab it out of my hands. Because if they grab the ball and they have to make an adjustment to pull their lift point, I can guarantee that they're in the air longer than they normally would be. And now they're thus feeling that higher lift point in the shot. And that's all we're doing when we're developing the form of higher lift points is we're teaching feel so players can separate. The tendency of players when they're shooting mid-range without a high lift point is they're shooting the ball as they're jumping. They're getting the ball out of their hands quickly. And because of that, they're not allowing themselves to tap into their athleticism. And if they're not tapping into their athleticism, well, now they're not going to be able to feel and attain the higher lift point. So exaggerations can be a huge key to teaching higher lift points. So players are actually in the air for longer. You're forcing them to jump. You're forcing them to make an adjustment and find where that higher lift point is. And then of course, out of that, once they start doing the real movements, the real motions, they'll at least be able to separate the difference between low lift points and high lift points in their training. The more you can learn multiple lift points, no matter your height, your size, whatever it is, I just understand the mechanics of that lift point and how to get to it. I start to open up my ability to understand shooting a little bit more. I'm gonna open up different types of shots I can take and I'm gonna give myself even a little bit better of a chance to get a shot over a defender because overall that's one of the best parts about a high lift point is giving myself a little bit of clearance. So in that high lift point, really focus on how you're getting the ball to that spot, where exactly is my high lift point, and then overall taking enough shots at it to feel comfortable shooting from that position. Overall, volume is a big part to being comfortable as a shooter. If I only take a couple shots from this high lift point, probably not gonna be that comfortable with it. But if I get in enough shots, I get enough volume at it, it's gonna become more comfortable over time. And so when you're teaching a high lift point or when you're practicing a high lift point, keep in mind, you have to be able to shoot from multiple lift points. It's not your job to pick which one is best for you. It's your job to train for as many lift points as possible so you can change your shot when needed and when you can adapt. Now, when you're doing this, you need to make sure that you're consistent. When you're shooting threes, when you're shooting NBA range and farther, know which lift point is your best lift point and learn how to shoot that as your most consistent shot. And then of course, when you're practicing your mid range, know which lift point is gonna be most important for that mid range shot. What is your high lift point gonna look like? And make sure you're practicing that consistently. So as long as you practice both, now you're able to adapt and become a scorer, not only a shooter. What's up guys, Bryce Sand up here with IPT. Make sure if you haven't hit that subscribe button, click it now. And then of course, once you're subscribed, turn on those post notifications so you can get all of our content and you can be the first.